All right, greetings everyone. This is Michael Storm, also known as Robin Hood, and uh, welcome to the next video. <laughs> um, what I'd like to go over today is uh, a cup, just a couple of pairs, you know, nothing too big. Um, we'll go over the uh, dollar index, maybe the euro and the pound, and then one of the dollar cross averages. And before I do that, I've got um, a screenshot up. I, I know that many people were actually interested in my. Uh, my treehouse, how it came out, you know, the, the office that I, I spent I don't know, a ridiculous amount of time building. It took me like a year. And uh, I just happened to have a screenshot of that available. So I'll show you guys real quick, you know, where I'm currently trading from. Uh, this is it. I've got a really decent uh, layout here. It still needs a few things, but, um, you know, number one is I don't have a couch yet. <laughs> I've got a nice coffee table, I got a nice kitchen. Um, you know, bathroom's cool, but you know, the couch is, uh, is not available yet. I can't seem to find one that will fit. Um, this actually got fixed. I ended up getting myself another uh, monitor that would take care of the one that was breaking down. Uh, this one just wouldn't stay on for some reason. It was pretty crazy. Um, so why don't we go over the uh, US dollar index. I'm just going to grab a quick screenshot here so that I can draw on this. Now, if you, um, Ah, of course, I do have to line it up well. If you look at this, a lot of people were thinking, you know, it kind of looked like a head, um, I'm sorry, a left shoulder over here, and a head, uh, and potentially a right shoulder situation. And everybody was looking at this as, you know, disaster that uh, the U.S. dollar would just die, you know, just completely die. And we had a, a trend line in place, which was pretty cool. And Every once in a while, I will flip between different sides. You know, I'll get bearish, I'll get bullish. Um, you know, I was pretty bearish up here. And uh, down here, I was very bullish. And then we, we hit this uh, trend line, and we took out a few stops, just a couple of them. But uh, there was still support, you know, left underneath. And if you were to put a fib in, you'd also see that as well. So I did get bullish here. And for about four days, things messed around. Um, right when the news came out, we had a very quick dip that lasted about an hour, an hour and a half. And it really, I, I think it stopped a lot of people out of uh, bullishness on the US dollar. They were, they were stopped out. Perhaps they even got short uh, right over here. And quickly, quickly got creamed because the very next day it just went up and it went up like mad. Now it's gone higher than I actually thought and I'm, I'm now you know, flipping to uh, the, the, I don't know what to do with this once I get it in the way. Okay, it, it, I'm flipping to the bearish side. Um, and the reason is that we have uh, completely filled the gap that, um, that was here. All right, and we've gone up a lot higher. We're up at the top of a channel. I and mean, you can see that we've got a lot of resistance uh, in this location, right? Pretty much all of this, actually, this is all very resistive and you know we're quite high the stochastics are quite high uh, it's my contention that we are due for a pullback and I think we should come down um, I do believe though that uh, there will be a lot of buyers that will step up to the plate uh, as soon as they get a chance you know they're they're sitting there and they're patiently waiting um, on the sidelines and you know they've left been left high and dry and um, I'm looking at this as a peaking pattern right now. Um, I think pretty much every down move is uh, going to be bought up. Um, I'm pretty sure that that down move right there will be bought. Uh, there will come a bounce, most likely. And we'll come up and hit a little area that will become slightly resistive. And then I'm looking for another move down into this, all of this area here. If you look on the four hour chart, you can see all of these lows. And it's my belief system that uh, most likely if we are to get back here, uh, there will be a lot of buyers that will step up to the plate looking to capture the pullback. Uh, so I look at this as a support zone for now. And I think especially if, you know, I, and I don't know that this can even happen or not, but remember there were four days right in here, okay? Four days where we could not break through any of this high uh, until that shakeout right there occurred, okay, that, that shakeout. So I believe that uh, if we even do make it down here, um, which might take a while, I mean, you know, we could be looking somewhere between three days and, and um, eight days, potentially, 
But if we make it down into this area here, uh, I believe there will be a lot of buyers that will step up to the plate, uh, get long US dollar, and look for that bounce, okay? So currently, I'm bearish, and I might be wrong. I also have to look at that aspect as well. Um, I do have trades on, but no one trade can make me or break me. So if we end up peaking above here and hitting the stops that I believe would be located here, here, there, and there, okay, I still think that most likely what will happen uh, in that place is that a lot of people will bail on their longs, market makers included, uh, if it manages to do this move. You know, I always have to look at the other side, right? I could be wrong. So if we don't go down, hey, we're going up. Uh, but if we go up, you know, it's probably a better short up here anyway. And then I, I will eventually look for this down move. Now, how long it takes to get there, okay, or here, I do not know. I mean, it could be a significant amount of time. We could be looking at weeks uh, if we do a move like this. Okay, I really don't know what the trigger will be. I just currently am a bear. All right. So that being said, um, looking at the the Dixie in a bearish light, I can also say that I'm a little bit on the bullish side for both the euro and the pound as well. Now, the euro had a look. Uh, if you will look at the daily chart, please notice I'm on a daily chart, and it had that look equally of an inverted shoulder over here and a head right here and you know a right shoulder right there uh, this trend line had broken if, if you, you know, put a trend line in here or possibly it uh, looks better this way uh, we broke it to the upside we hit the top of a channel obviously we've taken out a huge number of stop losses that were in the market People were very bullish on the euro. I remember um, these days quite well. When we were trading up at 118, they were calling for the euro to go to 119 and the euro to go to 120, and that's just the way the bulls operate. You know, they will always talk their book. And by talking their book, I mean that they're looking to get out and they have to sell to someone. So the only way to sell to somebody is to con convince them uh, that something else is going to happen when indeed it probably isn't. You might be able to notice that right now on the U.S.-Japan. Take a look at the various news pieces that are out there and they will say that the U.S.-Japan is on track. It's going higher. Boy, buy that U.S.-Japan now. And you see a lot of people uh, issuing trade calls on it. Now, I'd like to know why they waited for as long as they did before they would call it bullishly. You see? Now that that's something you have to think about. Why was it not called bullishly hundreds of pips lower? Because they were quietly accumulating, and now they want to dump it to someone. So they're saying that US-Japan is just smooth sailing at this moment, I'm just gonna keep on trucking. Well, that's one of my cues to say no, and it's almost over. I'm looking at the daily and the stochastics on the US-Japan, and I believe we're due for a pullback. But anyway, that being said, when I look at the um, the euro dollar at this moment we're down here at support levels and the bottom of the channel and we've got three very good pushes that you can see and here's one here's two here's three they're very good they're high quality and to my entire trade room um, the other day you know I was, I was telling them uh, in, in my opinion we were short the euro uh, and in our humble opinion we were looking for 115 now Today, it came really, really crazy close, i got to admit, and I did finally get out of all of my Euro shorts uh, in this area, and I flipped ever so lightly to the long side, okay? But in so doing, uh, it does take time for everything to, to work its way out. One of the trades that we, uh, we ended up anticipating and, and catching this day in our room was this look over here that we had, you know, an ascending wedge or a triangle or a pennant, whatever you want to call it. And I, I told everybody, I said, you're just going to have to be patient, give it time, you know, because we, we were long. 
and we were waiting for the tops to break out. We were waiting for um, this to go above the uh, 200 MA. But whenever something's beaten down so long, you know, you'll tend to get quick spikes like this where we dumped our, our longs into. Uh, and you have to wait for you know high quality pullbacks before you can you can get long again. All right, so where would I currently you know just looking at the uh, five and the fifteen minute chart and you know even looking at the hourly chart you know where would I currently like to get long again? Uh, I have to say you know it's somewhere down here. Okay, if we can receive a pullback into this support level over here, I'd be very much willing. To, uh, to go ahead and buy up a few small slices with the anticipation that it will it will go higher in the you know in the days ahead. So that's my thoughts on US dollar index and that is also my thought on the euro and maybe we can shift over now to the pound. Now the pound we've been bullish for a while in my uh, in my trade room we've been very bullish on it um, and we took it you know long and we did get out somewhere up in this level uh, days ago we were bailing out we were flipping short and I basically called out to everyone in the, the room you know we need to be short this thing and it's gonna have a significant down move uh, that comes but just remember that nothing goes in a straight line okay nothing well let me qualify that usually nothing goes in a straight line it is a very rare moment when something does go in a super super straight line like you see on the CAD pairs right now which I believe is overdone both CAD Swissy, uh, CAD Japan, US Canada you name it Euro Canada, Pound Canada it all just seems really really overdone to me you know and if anything falls apart on the NAFTA agreement obviously we're gonna have a reversal I feel pretty bad about it. I did try and make a video the other day, uh, and, and I did actually make it, process it, stored it on my hard drive, and was really about to download it. But something was tragically, tragically wrong with this uh, Blue Yeti microphone, and I didn't have my um, hub, USB hub, at the time, and it was terrible. The sound was so bad. After listening to it for five minutes, I deleted it. <laughs> I really feel bad about that because I was calling the uh, CAD Swiss as a long uh, before that, but it just, eh, whatever. So I, I deleted it, so that that's whatever. It's over. No no, no need to go there now. Uh, but nothing, mo nothing normally moves in a straight line, okay? You will have significant downdrafts. You'll have significant pops. You'll have retracements that come into support zones, and, you know, just, this is the natural flow. Okay, the natural flow of the market is in this, in this uh, method. So when I look at the daily of this right now, let me go ahead and um, uh, let me just reload it because that's terrible. <laughs> just I, I get it all messy and it no longer uh, is discernible to us. Okay, I'll blow it up a little bit. We'll throw some fibs in here, see if we can determine uh, where we think that this should stall. Now, if you're looking at the, the FIBS right now, you'll notice uh, that we've come down, and we've bounced firmly, and we've come down again. That's push number two. Popped again, and we, uh, you know, again, push number three, okay? So we have broken some pretty critical lows over here and come into some decent support. Now, we haven't hit the 618 level yet. The stochastics are buried, but they can always get a little bit more buried, right? So maybe we will receive one additional uh, push to the south side on the pound dollar. This could be so. And even, even if it is so, um, I will be looking to, well, I am long, <laughs> and I'm looking to get long. I'm not long on this account, but I'm long on another account. I think I've got, I don't know, three, three or four bullets. I got like 0.15 or 0.20 or something like that. And it's, you know, I'm a little bit underwater, but nothing major. Uh, so I'd like to see, you know, the pound maybe get another squish south, uh, take out some stops over here. If you look at that area, that's, you know, to me, that's stop land, okay? And I would um, very much love to see it get hit. Most people can't understand why I say stuff like that, but I would hope a trade would go a little bit more negative on me uh, so that I would have a chance to load up more. Uh, that's just the way I think. You know, if you don't think that way, I uh, <laughs> don't know what to say. Good 
good luck to you, I guess. But um, this could go down more, in my opinion. Uh, this will probably get buried. Please forgive me for that bird. I can't do anything about him. Ollie, would you be quiet? <laughs> he won't. He won't listen to me because he's a bird brain. That's why. He doesn't understand. So uh, he's upset because I'm in the office at 9.15 at night. Ooh, he must be mad at me. So my expectation is that uh, in three to five days, the stochastics will be pointed upwards. We will receive a significant bounce. And I'm long-minded, okay? And, you know, with me, I'm, I'm looking for the smaller time frames. I'm always dropping down into the five-minute charts, the 15-minute charts, etc. cetera. Uh, so I don't really have to be too amazingly accurately correct. Uh, but I will say that there are instances that, you know, I hold a trade and I'm, I'm not pleased, you know. I'm not pleased with how long I have to hold it. Um, on screen is one example. I have been long on this trade right here, US dollar SEK. I swear it's got to be at least seven days, maybe eight. I'm trying to think how long it's been now. This would be day number nine. I am completely empty, by the way. Uh, today I exited every last bit up here. I did actually call this out to my trade room yesterday, as a matter of fact, and said, guys, give it one more day, one more push. And I said, we are raising our target. And the last two or three slices, we took off at the highs today and got paid quite handsomely on it. And I have actually flipped to the short side. Um, I'm pretty sure I started buying in this bar, in this daily bar. And I held the trade for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess I held it for eight days. Okay, so you can see that stochastics that are buried, hey, they can get more buried. All right, they can get more buried before they end up going up again. And the market loves to move in three to eight day or three to 10 day increments. And we will often see consolidative periods of time like this where you have extremely narrow range bars, Know, little doji's happening, a medium range bar with a medium doji, you know. Uh, it's just periods of indecision and periods where, you know, the market makers are loading up on one side and, you know, they're taking all that they can possibly get, you know, because they know what they're going to do. They have their plan and you know, they know the way the market works. And most people just get scared and they get scared and they bail at the worst possible times, the worst, worst possible times. Uh, so I got to congratulate myself on this because even though I did scale out on the way up, I did save the last couple of slices and they worked out exceedingly well. But if you look at all US dollar exotic crosses right now, NOK, ZAR, uh, TRY, you know, etc. Just SEK, DKK, I don't care what it is, just anything with US dollar in it, it's getting pretty crazy. It's getting pretty lofty. And like I said, you know, you can remain up here for a while, sure. This might take a few more days for this to happen. But nonetheless, even if it goes higher, I am still expecting a downdraft, all right? And I don't know how long it's it's going to go on for. I, no, no man knows the day or the hour. No man knows the exact top or the exact bottom. And if you trade small and trade lightly, you know, you can scale in like a market maker and you don't have to be all that concise and scared to death because you just put, you know, two and a half lots on or five lots on. Uh, we have one guy in our trade room right now. It kind of scares me a little bit. I I'm, I mean, I I commend him in some, in some ways. I've, I've got to say he has doubled his account four and a half times in three months, four months. I, I'm not really sure. And he is trading, in my personal opinion, too big. Um, I think so. But he's doing a good job. You know, he is a 20-year veteran of uh, trading stock markets. And he shifted over to Forex and struggled for a little while. But all of a sudden has come out and seriously, seriously kicked some butt. And I'm trying real hard to get him to uh, call out some of his trades. And as a matter of fact, actually, today he did a great job. He called out gold as a long, uh, not just once, but twice and banked 30,000 showed the trade room and I was looking at that figure and I was like oh my goodness you know it really freaked me out and uh, he was also calling the pound yen short and he also nailed that one pretty good so I guess I can't fault the guy he's doing a great job but me personally me you know 
I don't feel good putting 10 lots on anything. It makes me shake when I put a million dollars on something. It's just beyond my comfort zone. And, uh, but it's, you know, it's obviously not beyond his comfort zone, you know. And I don't really know where you stand as a trader. Maybe it is beyond your comfort zone and maybe it isn't. But personally, I really like my way of trading in very small bullet sizes where no one trade can hurt me, make me, or break me, you know. Um, I mean, I'm just plugging along, you know. I, I make anywhere from 1% to 2% and sometimes 3% in a day. That's that's about it, you know. I, I But I, I look at those and I, and I look at the 33% or so per month gains and I'm, I'm happy with it. I don't, I don't need to go from 5k to 10k uh, then go from 10 to 20 go from 20 to 40 and 40 to 80 and then I'm sitting at 100 grand and I did it all in you know uh, whatever it was I, f I forget what he said three months or four months I, I just I know it sounds crazy he went from 5k to 100k in four months but um, you know to me that's just too big <laughs> I don't like it I'm scared so I would say you know if if you don't have that kind of mentality and you're okay with it uh, that you should probably trade smaller all right and if you trade smaller you can you can hack things like this you know you can hack getting short and you can have a trade go uh, against you some amount uh, and still turn around and manage to you know to work the trade out over the course of days because you know eventually like the song says spinning wheel it's got to go round, okay? And that's the way it is. It's it's just a spinning wheel, all right? I mean, the Earth is a spinning globe that we're on, and we have a spinning wheel here. And what goes up must come down, all right? So I don't know if that was a uh, help to you or not, but um, these are just my thoughts. And you can extrapolate that, you know, against any other pairs that you, that you might um, feel to look at, you know? I mean, I am currently bearish. On US dollar so I want to see the US dollar go down which means I'm looking for euro to go up I'm looking for pound to go up I'm looking for US dollar exotics to go south and I'm looking for the odd in the New Zealand dollar of course against the US dollar to go up okay so that's that's just me that's what I'm looking for all right so I wish everybody a really fantastic trading week um, today is Tuesday just remember that reversals can happen anywhere between Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and then usually things will rock pretty hard until Friday and whatever low or high has been made on Friday you know before that day is over before you know 12 noon or 2 o'clock there should be a significant reversal because what is the goal of the market makers they want to trap you <laughs> they want to roll you over I know it sounds bad but it's true they want to roll you over into the weekend and leave you trapped high and dry for any event risk that might come or for any evil gap plans that they might happen to have so don't be crazy you know if you got a good trade on and you know it's Friday afternoon you know you might want to look to tightening up your in-the-money stop losses so that you get booked out for a gain uh, and you don't have to get trapped into anything okay so that's my advice trade small trade safe breathe easy relax don't let any one trade kill you please and diversify your trades across a basket you're gonna feel a whole lot better um, and again you know I would say uh, get yourself some multiple screens if you don't have them oh which brings me to another point yeah today we finally got our 50% um, off uh, discount code from um, what is it called now? <laughs> Floating charts. It's been an elusive thing to try, you know, when you want to buy it, I mean, you don't really feel like paying $77. I mean, that's full price. It's kind of a good deal in one sense because you get, you know, get to use it on three computers, um, get it for life. Uh, you know, it's a one-time payment, but heck, if I can get a 50% off deal, I want it. So I did contact uh, Floating Charts, and we do have um, on our website, got a 50% off deal. And, you know, granted, guys, I'm an affiliate. You know, I'm going to make a couple of dollars. If you purchase the thing, I'm probably, I don't really know what I'm going to get. Could be two bucks or five bucks. I, I don't, you know, I don't really know. But at 30, what is it now? $77 divided by two. Okay, so we're talking 30 something dollars uh, to purchase floating charts and float your MT4 all over your six or eight monitors. 
it's a great deal, you know, and if I get a couple of dollars, I guess it's not the end of the world. But anyway, that code is on the website if you guys are interested. So, um, again, thanks for watching. I wish you a really great uh, trading week, and maybe someday I will uh, give you some trades that will make you some money, and you can come check us out for a month and, and get a chance to watch the other 40 videos. Yes, I have not released those on YouTube, and I don't think I'm ever gonna because it's just too darn good. I reserve that for my roomies. They come in, they say, where's the other videos? I give them the link, they get them. So if you want those 40 videos, you got to hook up with us for a month, okay? All right, God bless, trade safely, and have a beautiful week. Until next time, this has been Robin Hood, and I wish you a good day.